Good evening, everyone. Wow. Lots of, lots of sound. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Merry Christmas Eve. <laughs> we are so glad to have you here at Epworth United Methodist Church, and I was trying very hard to make sure I said good evening and not good morning, because so often it's just habit. You come to church, you say good morning. But it is really evening. It's Christmas Eve. That's, a, that's an amazing thing. There's definitely magic in the air. There's all the decorations up. Is everyone done? All the shopping done? Everything? Okay. Hopefully. But we are so glad that you came this evening and joined us for our Christmas Eve service. Uh, my name is Reverend Bill Jones. I serve as a youth pastor here at Epworth alongside our lead pastor, Pastor Terry Kofiel. And we are glad to have you here uh, this evening. This is our first service. This is our family service. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and get people involved and everything else. So you might see people wearing goofy things, doing goofy things, and having fun. And we want you to have fun with us as we tell the story of Jesus and Jesus' birth. So we're going to have a good time with that. Um, if you are a marathon service goer, we have two more this evening that we'd like you to uh, encourage you to come to. There's one at 7 o'clock. It's a candlelight service. That'll be at Historic Jessup's Church up in Sparks, right off of York Road in Sparks. And then we will come back here for our 11 o'clock candlelight service uh, where we will ring in Christmas Day um, at the end of the service. Oh, yes, exactly. That service starts at 11, but come at 10.30 because we're going to have special music going on before the service starts. So um, we used to give prizes if you went to all three services. Do we have a prize this year? No. Uh, but we'll get Kara to give you a gold star. How's that sound? Excellent. So anyway, thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, did you have any announcements, Elaine? No. Excellent. So with that in mind, sit back and enjoy. Uh, but before you do that, I encourage you to rise and share the joy of Christmas with all those around you. Merry Christmas.
Beloved, let us pray. God, our maker, we are here to celebrate your son's birthday. We are so excited by the lights, the parties, the cookies, and the presents that sometimes it's hard to remember the true reason for this holy season called Christmas. Help us to celebrate Jesus' presence in our lives every day so that we may live as his faithful disciples, offering love, hope, and compassion to everyone we meet. This we pray in his name. Amen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pastor Bill? What's the matter? We're not ready. We're not? We're not ready. You didn't set up the nativity? I didn't set up the nativity, and you we forgot to light the lights. candles. Oh, my goodness. Oh my We're not ready. Are you? Oh, my goodness. And it's almost Christmas, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Well, here's Mary. I see her. Can you all see her? It's not very big, is she? No. Well, you know, years and years and years ago, in the year 1,223, who can do the math? How many years ago was 1,223? You can use a pencil if you need to. In the year 1223, in Italy, there was a man named Francis. Now we know him as St. Francis. And he decided that people needed to remember the story of Jesus' birth. And that's why, how many of you have one of these in your house? Maybe it looks different. What is this called? Some people call it a nativity. Some people call it a creche, which is a French word that means cradle. We made some here on the first Sunday of Advent out of graham crackers and candy. But I don't know that we can see this very well, so maybe we'll move this out of the way, and maybe we'll tell the story the way St. Francis did. He lived in Italy, and in 1223, when he was a very old man, he decided people needed to be able to experience Jesus' birth the way it happened years before. So he went outside the town, and he found a cave, because really, at the time of Jesus, they didn't have stables like this. They kept their animals in caves. And he found a cave, and he cleaned it up, and he borrowed some animals, and he borrowed a manger, and he called the whole town to come out and to see the birth of Jesus the way it was at the beginning. So I think we should do the same thing tonight, don't you? <coughs> Don't you? Yeah. Are you all willing to help me tell the story tonight? Always. For sure. Oops. Well, we're going to start with the story that happened even longer before St. Francis. That was when an angel appeared and spoke to a girl. Hmm, I wonder if there's anyone here who's feeling angelic tonight. I need an angel. Who could be an angel for me? Would you like to be an angel? Come on up here. Because if you're going to be in this play, you've got to look the part. Not that you don't look angelic already. And we need someone to be Mary, so can you find us a Mary? Go find us a Mary, please. We're going to have to cover up your hat. I hope you'll let us do that. You're fine with that? Can you put this around your head? How's that? Okay. Your hat's coming off. Can we take your hat off for this part? All right. I don't think I've ever seen you without your hat. <laughs> you hair here. Okay. I'm sure this is just what Mary looked like. But we need to hear the story. So do we have someone who can read the story for us of that first conversation between Mary and the angel? Look, here comes Emma. Um, this is Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 33. <coughs> when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. 
when virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Um, now rise and stand. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. Not quite. Not quite. Sorry about that. We're going to sing in just a minute. Is that what your dad said to say? Yeah. Okay. See, we're not quite ready. What a story. What a start to the story. An angel. What's an angel? Do you know what an angel is? An angel is God's messenger. Angels always come from God. They always have a message. And it's usually a scary message because angels have to say, don't be afraid. And the angel came to Mary and said, you're going to have what? A baby boy. Now we're going to stand and sing. And Miss Elaine's going to play the song through once. But I'm going to tell you what, this is a Calypso song. You know what Calypso is? It's a kind of music from the, I, okay. Miss Christina's got it. We're going to dance. And these pews are now your drums. So stand up. And we're going to listen to the song, and then we're going to sing together the first verse of the Virgin Mary had a baby boy. baby, but Mary was engaged to be married to a man and his name was, I can't remember. Joseph. Joseph. Are you sure? Well then, come on Joseph, you can come up here and be Joseph. I know you'll have to go read later. You're a little bit tall, but that's okay. We can get Nathan. He can do it. <laughs> if I could reach his head. Oh, yes. And unlike Mary, he was asleep when the angel came to him. <laughs> and I hope this isn't the part that you were supposed to read, is it? Okay. We have another story from Scripture. Okay, Miss Angel, you're going to go over and talk to him. Listen to what they say in the story. <laughs> this is Matthew 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. 
Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. It's time to sing a song again. This is one that talks about the name of what Jesus means. Emmanuel, do you remember what Emmanuel means? God with us. So I'm gonna let you sit down and sing this time, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Before the angel appeared to Joseph and even before the angel appeared to Mary there was a prophet named Micah. A prophet is like an angel only it's a person. It's a person who speaks for God. God will give a word to the prophet and the prophet will proclaim it. Sometimes we think of prophets as being able to see the future. That's not exactly what a prophet is unless God wants to predict that something's going to happen so that people learn to believe and be faithful. So we're going to listen now to the prophecy about where Jesus would be born. So we're going to read now from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. The Lord said, Bethlehem, e Ephria, Eph <laughs> you, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judea, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to the days of long ago. The Lord will hand over his people to their enemies. That will last until the pregnant woman bears her promised son. There the rest of his relatives of, in Judea will return to their land. That promised son will stand firm and be the shepherd of his flock. The Lord will give him the strength to do it. The Lord his God will give him the authority to rule. His people will live safely. His greatness will reach from one end of the earth to the other. Wow, that's a great prophecy, isn't it? That a baby born in a little tiny town halfway across the world would be the one who would come to save his people and his kingdom would be established and it would last forever. There's a song about that town. Do you know that song? It's called A Little Town of Bethlehem. Can we sing one verse of that together?
the song sounds a lot like what the prophet said, doesn't it? The hopes and fears of all the years. From the beginning of time, people have been waiting for their Messiah, the one that God would send to save his people. And so we're at that night now. What do you think is going to happen next? You're going to have to find an end. Are you the reader for this one? Okay, we're going to hear from Joseph now the story of Christmas night. Okay, I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby. While Mary and Joseph were there, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth. Then she placed him in a manger. That's because there was no guest room where they could stay. You see, a long time ago, babies weren't born in hospitals like they are now. They were born at home. But Mary and Joseph had to travel a long way. And if they were traveling a long way, do you think they took an airplane? No, they didn't have airplanes. Do you think they took a car? No. A donkey? Well, Joseph, I think you need to go find yourself a donkey. <laughs> in a manger. Come on up, Mr. Donkey. <laughs> With your hat on, of course. Oh, yes. This is beginning to look like a crash, I tell you what. They're related, okay? In the, in the interest of full disclosure, I have been asked to inform you all that this is not a donkey, this is a horse. <laughs> Let it be said that we told the truth tonight. Well, they didn't have a place to put a baby, so they put him in a manger. What's a manger? Is a manger a fancy little cradle or a bed? What is it? It has the animal's food in it. I'm guessing maybe it has a cow's food in it. And Mr. Horse, you get to choose the cow now. <laughs> well, he's he's a donkey horse. He's a mule. He's part donkey part. Okay. <laughs> and we need a manger. Does anybody have something? Oh, look, we've got. <gasps> look at this beautiful manger. <laughs> I think you need to go sit by the manger, folks. And I think we can sing a song about a manger. Please join in singing verse 1 of Away in a Manger.
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the God shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will be great joy for, the pe for all the people. Today, in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. There. Here is how you will know. I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in stripes of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from the heavens also appeared. They, they were praising God. They said, May glory be given to God in the highest heaven. And may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. The angels left and went down to heaven. Went. Then the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this, little, this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Shepherds and sheep and angels. This is turning into a big production. So I need some shepherds. Who wants to be a sh Do you want to be a shepherd, Clara? We need more than one shepherd. <laughs> Here comes another shepherd. more shepherds than that. Come on, let's get some shepherds. Let's get some big shepherds. Okay, Paul. That's right. Don't laugh because you could be next. <laughs> shepherd. I need another shepherd. Oh, trust me, it gets worse from here. Shepherd is not a bad thing to be. Come on. Need a shepherd. Okay, Isaac's going to be shepherd. Okay, your hair's kind of wet. Well, I can't reach your head, so thank you for bending down here. Okay. Well, you know, those people who didn't want to be shepherds, guess what? I need you to find me three sheep. Thank you. 
together verse one of While Shepherds Wash Their Flocks by Night. <laughs> Verses 16 through 20, read to us by a good-looking sheep. <laughs> you didn't know sheep could read, did you? We have all kinds of talent here. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary kept all these things these things secret like it's a treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherd returned. They gave her glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they had been told. Well, look at this. We've got Mary and Joseph. We've got the animals. We've got the shepherds. We've got the sheep. We've got a multitude of the heavenly host. We're just missing one thing. What are we missing? Jesus. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Where is Long periods. where the story ends. Because what appeared in the sky the night that Jesus was born? There was something in the sky and it twinkled and it, I think we have a star. <laughs> now, I bet in your nativity set at home you have three men wearing crowns, right? They did not get there that night. They did not have an airplane or a helicopter. They came from far away. We don't know that there were three, and we don't know that they were men. We certainly don't know that they were kings other than they brought very expensive gifts, gifts that were befitting a king, gifts appropriate for a king. They didn't bring pampers or bottles or binkies. What were the gifts that they brought to the baby Jesus? What did they bring, Clark? Gold. Gold? <laughs> Very good. What else? Frankincense. Frankincense. And what else? Myrrh. Myrrh. Well, they might have been, there might have been a, a female. But you're not going to get there tonight. You're going to start in the back. And you look like you could be a king. Michaela. Or a wise. 
wise man. You look very wise to me. Who else is looking wise back here? Some people are looking down like, please don't see me, lady. It's just like in the third grade when you didn't have your homework and the teacher, no? Yes. Go to the back. You get to stay in the back. They started their journey when they saw the star, but they didn't get there yet. But the story takes us way, way, way back before St. Francis, before the angels talked to Mary or Joseph, before the babe was born, before the wise guys got there from the east. The story goes back to the beginning of all things because Jesus was part of God from the very beginning. We're going to hear that reading now from John's Gospel. This is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 14. In the beginning, the Word was already there. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him. Nothing that has been made was made without Him, for life was in Him, and that life was in the light for all people. The light, shine, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome the light. The Word became a human being. He made His home with us. We have seen its glory. It is glory of the one and only who came from the Father, and the Word was full of grace and truth. Let's sing about the word of God made flesh in that great hymn that Charles Wesley, one of the founders of Methodism, wrote, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. for four weeks now of hope, of peace, of love, and of joy. Tonight we light the candle that says, Jesus, our Savior, is born. Arise, shine, your light has come, the Lord's glory has shone upon you. We will rise and we will shine. Do you mean that? You're going to rise and shine. Do you mean that? Do you mean that? Because the story that started so long ago at the beginning of the world, the story that prophesied the coming of our Messiah and our Savior, is a story that belongs to all of us. I think we need to give a hand to all our actors tonight. Francis wanted all of us to see and be part of the story. So let me ask you this. How do we be part of, how do we become part of this story? How do we become part of the story of Christmas? We have to tell other people. We have to be like the angels. We have to sing like we've done tonight that Jesus has come. We have to be like the shepherds who were so excited that they ran back to tell everyone they met, we've seen God's salvation in this little baby. Because the story is for each of us here tonight. We're part of the nativity. We're part of the creche, the cradle. We're part of the story of our Savior's birth. So I'm going to ask you all now to stand and to sing a song that was written 300 years ago this year. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, and sing it like you mean it. So please stand and join in singing.
maybe a crown from Burger King and got to be part of the story of Christmas. How many of you thought those days were long behind you and yet you're up here? <laughs> I, wish I, had, I wish I had a crush like this at my house because that would remind me every day of how good God has been to me in my life. So make the story your own. Live it every day. Share the good news of God and Jesus Christ so that the world might know through you, your Savior. Let's have a prayer. Holy God, we're so excited tonight, but we need to go home and go to bed. So grant us peaceful sleep so that we might wake up tomorrow rejoicing in the love and the wonder of Jesus' birthday. This we pray in his name. Amen. Reverend Bill, bless us and send us home. Would you please join me in the Christmas blessing? Go into the world with the faith of Mary and Joseph who believed. Nothing will be impossible with God. Sing out like an angel the good news of Christ's birth. Glory to God in the highest. Run like a shepherd toward Jesus, your Savior. We will go into this night rejoicing. And wisely follow that star, bringing the best gift you can offer, your loving heart. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jesus. Oh, that's right. This is a birthday party. And what do you do at a birthday party? Bring presents. We spring presents. <laughs> and we sing. <laughs>